maybe we can just jump right in. We have so many questions about so many different parts of this business. You guys are radically transparent. You're remote only. There's a lot of really interesting stuff for us to dig into. Do you mind talking this group through some of the board meeting best practices that you've arrived on just at a high level for this team? Uh, you know, Sid sends out the deck several days ahead of time, every time, which as you know, is the best practice. We all digest it. We fill out a Google doc with our questions. His team answers those questions in real time. So like if I'm filling it in at midnight or two in the morning, my time, uh, I don't think it's an expectation by Sid, but it's just kind of who his team is. Uh, in real time, they'll be updating my questions with answers. Uh, we, you know, in the board meeting, Sid, or before the board meeting, Sid has released a video of his CEO update. It's like a public company CEO's update. He releases a written doc with um, some of his highlights. And then uh, in our board meeting, we have strategic conversations only, not not updates. And they're really interesting strategic conversations. So I guess, Sid, how did you get to those best practices? And, um, and, and, and what sort of what drove us to where we are today, which I think is a great process. Uh, sending out the deck in advance, like just makes sense. Just, um, <laughs> right. and, and we just have a cutoff date and we sent out the deck at that time. And if you're not ready, you're not ready. But the video update, we, st we start doing that. Uh, we do it with other meetings because people couldn't resist presenting in meetings. And now the policy is if you start presenting in meetings, like you'll get cut off and be like, great. If you like presenting, send the video next time because this is synchronous time. It's super hard to get everyone online at the same time. Um, there's other commitments that people have in the personal life that they, they might have to balance. So don't use that for something that could have been asynchronous. Um, also, you can talk only this fast. And uh, if you do a video, I can read the subtitles or speed it up or watch it at a time that's more convenient for me. Um, and the board members kind of did ask every time, like, hey, Sid, can you give a little bit of context? And now we, we do a video up front, which has been uh, well received. About those questions, yes, we, we answer them. Um, I hope that people don't have a ping open to like immediately answer the, the questions. Um, I hope that people take time off and, and use the flexibility of remote to do that. But we do try to answer them up front, just so, hey, we got 72 hours, um, we got some time. Like it, it would be very strange if the only time you checked for questions was uh, at the board me meeting itself. Um, so we do try to answer as much as we can async. And if the same question comes up a couple of times, we discuss it in the board meeting to get more color, more contacts, get more people involved. But uh, we try to have three big questions that we ask the board members during the meeting um, to make sure that we focus on something that that like we we really need help with um, and get as much as the operational updates out of the way also we've been getting better at uh, pre-briefing the board members so that uh, the permanent board members uh, will be will get a pre-briefing from the team so that they can ask their questions and then don't have to take up synchronous time uh, and we are respectful of the time. We, we use the time together to have the strategic things that are complex and requires everyone's attention. We have a really uh, compelling board with many, uh, many voices who disagree with each other actively and who have very different backgrounds. And I'd love to, to better understand how you got to such a diverse board and how you think about diversity going forward for the company. Proud of the board we have, even more excited of the board we have in a, in a couple of years. Um, and uh, yeah, it's obvious that diversity in many dimensions, all the way from uh, very obvious uh, dimensions as, as gender and, and, and ethnicity to like different backgrounds in like people are product focused, CEO focused, um, operational focused, finance focused, uh, but also different ways of processing information. Uh, I think, um, I'm very proud that like we don't have like board members dominating the board meeting. Um, we make sure that we go by the order of questions asked in the doc. And I think it helps to kind of reduce the impact of like the loudest voice. Um, now I must say that I also kind of selected for board members who are high signal to noise. And I think uh, Dave's a great example of that, but so is everyone else on the board and people are super respectful of each other's time. I'm going to open it up. GV folks, what questions do you have? 
Um, hey, Sid, I want to piggyback on the last question um, around diversity. Um, given that you have a remote culture, um, how do you create belonging across different groups of employees? And I'm curious if, if over this very interesting year of 2020, uh, where a lot of companies are suddenly going remote, you've obviously been doing this for a while. Um, has that strained the remote model? Has have the conversation strained the model or has it, have you still been able to effectively uh, bring people together? Yeah, um, well, we haven't been able to bring them together in a physical sense as we like to do once a year. Uh, but I, I think by being uh, the world's biggest old remote company before the pandemic, we already got kind of years of experimenting. And a lot of the belonging comes from like informal communication, getting to know people on a, on a more personal level. And we, uh, we try to practice that uh, all the way from coffee breaks to um, use bot calls. So thank you for joining us. My name is Jessica. I invest on the consumer and enterprise team. And I spent about nine years at Twitter, which also really prized itself as a transparent culture. But I think you all um, have been just a step ahead and on this frontier with both remote work and transparency. And I can't tell you the number of conversations I have with companies now that really want to get that right. And you all are a reference point because you've been doing this for so long, but you've also prolifically documented it, which is just an amazing contribution to the ecosystem. I have sort of a zoomed out question, which is, it seems like open source, um, the culture of open source is is increasingly influencing the, the, the culture of the way that we run companies, like fully distributed, totally transparent. I wonder if you could just touch on um, where you think this goes in the next couple years? Our mission is everyone can contribute. And I think that really gels well with kind of that open source aspect. Because things are transparent, people have an opportunity to opine. And in GitLab, that means everyone can make a proposal. Everyone can send a merge request. Even you, like if you look at one of these pages and you see anything from a typo to just like a big philosophical difference that you have, you can send out an, uh, a proposal to change it. But what you, the downside of that might be that you get so many voices in the room that you cannot make progress anymore. I think the startup is defined by its speed of decision making. So we're very big on DRIs, directly responsible individuals. And as a company, we want to be kind of combine the best of consensus organizations and hierarchical organizations. Before a decision is made, everyone can chime in. Decisions fly above the radar. They are actively spread. All the content, all the relevant context is there and everyone can voice their opinion, but more importantly, contribute data like I've seen this, I've seen that. But the decision is made by the person who has to do the work and they don't have to convince anybody. They don't have to build consensus. They can just do it. They don't owe anybody an explanation. And that's counterintuitive. Most companies go to either side. We try to combine both, but in different stages of the process. One sort of follow-up to that, actually. Hi, it's video here from, from London. Um, you guys have like a, a super interesting culture and you know beyond your remote, just obviously the way that you do things and codify everything. When you're hiring, do you, actively select for that culture like do you have active steps to sort of test uh fitness for the culture that you have or is it more um through the hiring process as they meet people does that happen organically remote is not a value of us and i i think that's super important remote is kind of it's a way of doing things if i'm hiring an executive very rarely have they worked remote um and that's fine we can we can do that we do higher for our values um, and then the obvious one from outside is transparency but the toughest value is iteration um, and for GitLab that means scoping down uh, the work so that you can yeah something so small you can get it out the door quickly you can after that like reassess what your next step is going to be um, so we do interview for that um, 
the remote part, like if I get pushed back from an executive, like I'm not sure I can make this work. To have them just interview with the other execs that came from a non-remote culture. And that's never failed to kind of convince someone they, they can make it work. I think with the remote, like succinct and clear communication is is more important than it otherwise would be. And some other things like remote kind of forces you to do things you should be doing anyway, but make it more essential that you uh, nail that. And we're talking about interviewing. That's not the only point in which we kind of reinforce our values. I'm a bit proud that we now have 17 documented ways in which we reinforce our values. And I think a lot of other companies spend a lot of time on defining their values, but not a lot of time making processes to reinforce them. Um, it's no secret that we have been talking about being a public company for a while out in the ecosystem. As you think about preparation for IPO, um, how do you think about the, the intersection of the amazing culture that you've built and the long-term orientation of all of the things that you talk about that are so important to the culture of the company and being a public company where pressure may be on the next quarter or the next earnings call. How do you think about that that conflict? Yeah, um, we have a, uh, a page about being a public company that the shadows will add to the chat. But uh, look, there's pressure now too. Like we do, we do already live quarter by quarter. Uh, we have our goals, and there's there's pressure to achieve them. So, in that sense, I, I think we're as strict for ourselves as the market will be. I think the consequences are just bigger, so it won't be additional pressure. It's just additional downside if uh, if you if you do fail. Um, we don't have to walk back transparency. So far, it seems that nothing is not nothing that we currently do. We cannot be transparent about uh, still when we are public. So, for example, we've never released our financials because we never want to walk back releasing them. So we've always operated from the mindset someday will be public and we never want to reduce transparency. So we'll see, uh, big words, and we'll see how we do when we're actually public and you can hold me accountable. But so far, so good, and we look forward to that. And I think public company, the public part stands for being more public. So it's kind of it's kind of curious that people think you can be public as a public company. You totally can. You just have to be public through a channel that people know, but everyone at the same time giving enough context. Um, and uh, I look forward to that challenge. Well, Sid, thank you so much for taking the time here. Your authentic, uh, direct, transparent approach is just awesome. And it, it's refreshing for everyone to engage with. Uh, we love the company and, and I and, and we have loved teaming with you. So thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it.